fish and the importance of uh, quarantining fish when, when you purchase them. Uh, when you buy fish, they always look healthy. Uh, we all know how to choose healthy fish, but are they quite healthy? So today we, we went to several stores and randomly purchased some catfish. So on the left here, we've got um, gold spot biceps uh, catfish. Over here, then we've got um, panda corridors. And then on the right here, or, or to your left here, what we have here are just your common sucker mouth catfish. We're doing some examinations of the stool samples to look for uh, evidence of enteric parasites, so things that come from the intestines and pass down through the feces. So we're just going to collect some samples. So here we've got the sample from a stool sample from the Diviceps catfish. And we just break it up a little bit by uh, going up and down with a syringe. And then we'll just remove excess water, put the cover slip on, and then we can examine. Great, so here we're examining the uh, feces of the Diviceps catfish. And you can see these sort of oval shaped structures. Um, you can see, I've uh, seen quite a few of them around now, so it makes me suspect that they're likely to be worm eggs. Okay, you can see there, uh, where the arrow is pointing. And if we scoot around, uh, you can see another one there. It's oval shaped. And that's another one there. And over here, what you can see is uh, those ciliated protozoa. Uh, they're likely to be just commensals that live at the tank bottom uh, and they just sort of munch things up and break, help break things down so they're, they're not a problem but uh, these, these things are concerning these oval shaped um, structures to me they really resemble mermaids so these are the gold spot diviceps that we were examining the, the stool samples of uh, we saw some oval shaped things uh, for me I'm thinking that they are likely going to be worm eggs uh, but uh, pollen and other structures can also look similar to that. So to definitively tell uh, what what they are, you can actually send them to a aquatic a fish parasitologist. Uh, or for me, I, I'm more used to looking at histology slides, so we could uh, centrifuge or spin it down, uh, create a pellet. Uh, once we get a cross section, and I, I'll be able to identify the structures that are inside uh, these these things and to see whether it's an egg or whether it's a pollen. Um, with, with eggs, it should have little in material. Uh, with pollen, uh, you'll see more of a plant type lattice structure. So now we've got sample from the uh, panda quarries. And just gonna put the sample there again. We're just going to up it up and down. So break up the feces, the stool sample a little bit. Um, that way you'll be able to view things much more easily on life microscopy. So this is a microscopic uh, examination of the corridors, the panda quarries. You can see a lot of just crud around. Uh, in the background, you can see some granular appearance that's likely going to be the bacteria uh, that's pr uh, proliferated since um, the feces was voided. Uh, so you can see that there's really nothing much to see underneath. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, there's a little free-living protozoa there that helps break down the feces, uh, and a lot of likely fillers in the food uh, that help with intestinal health. Um, that's, that makes up part of the fish's diet. Well, I can see basically a lot of black material and detritus. Uh, a lot of bacteria in the background, but that's likely uh, proliferation after. Yeah, so these uh, corridors uh, get the thumbs up approval for, for not um, defecating any parasites. The thing with uh, examining feces for parasites is that uh, if you get a negative result, it, it's not necessarily diagnostic um, because they may be intermittently passing the, the, the parasites. So if you get a negative, uh, you may have to check in on them again, maybe in a week or two weeks time. Uh, either because they're intermittently shedding the, the parasite, the worm eggs, or maybe that it might be the pre-patent period. So they might have been infected, 
uh, but the parasites aren't producing uh, the eggs or anything that is going to pass out to the fish yet. So uh, you have to uh, keep an in eye and, and examine, read about the life cycle of the parasite that you're dealing with, uh, the species of fish, the host that you're dealing with, and also the water temperature and other environments. So here we're looking at the stool sample from the common bristlenose catfish. So here already you can see right in the center of the screen is some sort of an oval shaped object. Uh, to, to me that, that does look like a, a worm egg. And so we scan around, uh, I saw quite a few more, uh, but to save you from getting seasick, uh, I won't do that. So in terms of treatment, uh, uh, if, if it was an egg, uh, my hunch would be that some sort of a nematode, uh, nematode being roundworm, so any sort of your roundworm treatments would work. So things like the Vamazole, Piperazine and Ivermectin, uh, some of the drugs that we use in, in fish. Uh, I, I won't go and talk too much into the detail with those traits and things uh, with those products yet because really it really depends on what species you're treating. Um, because the safety margins can be different uh, and also what type of product you're using. So best to speak with your aquatic vet, uh, your fish vet, to, um, to try and diagnose these diseases and work out the treatment protocol suited to your needs. So in this video we covered some of the internal parasites but there's a whole host of external parasites we didn't touch on. Uh, these, will be, these need to be checked for uh, and we'll cover these in future videos. Uh, so please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hope to see you.